What is up guys, Speed here, and today I'm going to be talking about the 5 most common carry mistakes that if you fix, you will gain MMR. I've been watching a lot of carry recently, and I've specifically noticed trends that hold these players back. I'm going to be following a legendish game today. I'm not going to be doing a replay analysis. I'm going to be giving specific clips for each of these points, looking at individual examples that hopefully can point out your mistakes that you are likely making as well through these players. And so yeah, if you are excited for that, please click the like button right now. If you could smash the like button, that would actually help out a ton. And now, let's get into the video. And in all seriousness, uh, I do want to mention one more thing. If you guys like the content I make here, I also make a lot of stuff over on the Game Leap website that you simply will never see here on YouTube. I actually make a video every single day for the website. I'm not going to say one of my videos comes out there every single day, but I am making a new exclusive piece of content every single day with the help of our editors to make sure you guys get the best information. So if you appreciate what I do here and you like the content that I make here and you want to get better as fast as possible, I recommend you click the link down below to get a 25% discount to GameLeap.com. And uh, so yeah, you can get more of my content. I recently did a replay analysis of a Rubik game that was super in depth, right? Super, super in depth. I do a lot of carry content as well. So go check it out. All right. So the first and most common mistake I see within carry players is their complete inability to pull creep aggro within the first few minutes. Creep aggro, in my opinion, is the most underutilized mechanic in the laning stage in all of Dota. You know, I, I could say poles as well, but surely people at least pull here and there. When I'm watching your average 1, 2, 3k MMR carry, for some reason, they never pull creep aggro. And if they do, it's like once a laning stage. Maybe 5 times, maybe 10 if they just watched a, a game league video. <laughs> but pros, they can aggro up to 20, 30 times in a laning stage, especially if they have a difficult matchup. Now let's look at our first example here. We have a Juggernaut with a Dazzle in lane, a pretty strong lane. However, they're laning against a Necrophos and a Silencer. When you're playing a melee hero against two ranged heroes, there really is only one major way that you can avoid taking damage. And that really is pulling creep aggro. Now there are some other tips such as, you know, mirroring the position four, buying extra regen, uh, maybe you can go for a kill attempt on someone who's bullying you. There are other options, but the most common one, especially at level one, is to simply pull the lane back. So what I mean by that is him playing carry here, because it's not under tower, he wants to pull it almost as much as he can, especially when he's going for individual CS. So the purpose of creep aggro in the laning stage really is twofold, but the main one that people forget is simply that you don't have to use it only to pull the entire creep wave back. You can use creep aggro to pull one creep back, the creep you're about to last hit. Because if Jug walks up to this creep, he's gonna get hit three, four times, right? And that's exactly what we see here. He goes for the creep and the silencer starts hitting him. So how could he have played that different? Let's go back at it and look at it. What the Juggernaut should have done in this situation to avoid taking damage is he should have looped around to the left. You're gonna see a line here, right? He should have looped to the left, gone around, and from this position, pulled creep aggro, right? You have a, a bit of a radius here. You're gonna have to figure it out. You're gonna have to build intuition around that. But he could have been around here, right click on the necro and pull it up, right? Especially when the creep is about one third HP. When the creep is around one third HP, if you pull creep aggro, it will continue to die and you'll be able to get the last hit when it's underneath your tower or at least closer to it. And that's what he should have done here, but he didn't. Instead, he went from the right side of the wave, which is where the silencer is coming from, and therefore he's gonna get bullied. And really, Dota is that complex. If you make two mistakes like that, such as a positioning and creep aggro mistake, all of a sudden, you lose four ends and 200 of your health. And he's gonna kinda keep doing that throughout the laning stage. Creep aggro is actually something you have to look for gaps for in the laning stage. And this is my last example before we move on to the next point. You have to look for gaps to pull creep aggro. Pros, no joke, will try to find when their opponents are not paying attention to get off creep aggro. And let's see an example of that here with Momo, I, I'm not even gonna try to say the name. But when the silencer backs up in a second here, he must pull creep aggro because he needs to get the lane back. And what you're gonna see is that the silencer walked in a circle there, right? He walked in a small circle. I'm gonna show that one more time. So. Right here, the silencer backs off. He was going to go for the dazzle, right? The dazzle came around the side. He bullied the silencer. Silencer's attention switches. It switches from Jug to the dazzle. And now Jug has a small opportunity right there to pull creep aggro. He could have pulled the creep back. Didn't do it. And because of that, he is now going to commit for the creep and tank three right clicks. In fact, he didn't get it. He didn't get it an eye. He has zero CS. And it really all comes down to this fact. So hopefully you guys can see the impact of creep aggro if you 
use it for individual creeps or just in general. I really do think people underutilize it and don't understand it. So hopefully that's a pretty good start for you guys. This next example here applies a little bit later in the game. We're around 10 minutes here, and honestly, this point can apply around the 5, 6, even 7 minute mark. And this point is that most carries make the mistake of staying in the lane way past the power spikes of the enemy offlaner, or they stay in the lane when it's way too dangerous. Guys, for some reason, players just don't leave. If the lane is dangerous and you are the farming priority hero, leave the lane. I know that might seem crazy, but <laughs> you really have to. So what we're going to see from this Luna here is that she takes a fight, right? She she does a bit of damage. She is in max lucid beam build with this horrid morbid mask. I mean, I, just ugh. like, I, I don't know. I, I just don't understand why she would buy this here. But nonetheless, let's move on. Maybe it's OK. However, the axe is at the point where he's a pretty high level, right? Axe is level seven. He hasn't had a god game. He's one and two, but she does know, because of a ward, that the enemy Lena, the mid laner, is in her lane, right? This is the mid laner. So she knows that this mid laner, who is 5-0 with 64 CS at the 10 minute mark, uh, is in her lane, right? She sees her coming. Now, at this point, I don't know, maybe she doesn't, maybe her awareness is actually just that bad. But at the end of the day, eventually the Lena shows here, which should make it really obvious to the Luna that Lena is in my lane. So what is the Luna's response? Is it to get out? Is it to stay? Well, of course it's to stay. Now, to be fair, the Lena makes a bit of a high MOR play, or like a good play in my opinion, where she doesn't necessarily instantly leave. She actually just gives Grimstroke mid, which in my opinion is super cool. And I wish more players did this. Maybe the Lena's a smurf, actually. Don't know. But nonetheless, the Luna should TP out right now. In fact, I don't even know why they defend this tower. Your job as a safe lane player is not to defend your tower. That is not your job, right? It is not your job. Are there games where you can defend it because you can kill the opponent? Sure, Dota is a very complex game, but nine times out of 10, leave. The same thing with this Drow. This is a mid Drow who's 0-3 and she's TPing to defend the most inconsequential tower in Dota, right? You know what's an important tower to defend? The mid tier one, and it's completely abandoned. So please guys, if your lane gets hard and you have a hero that can jungle, or there's another lane that is open, you must leave. If you die because you don't, that is a massive mistake that will slow down your timing. So sure, she ends up getting a beam onto the Dazzle because Dazzle commits literal suicide, and I feel bad for Dazzle, you know, I hope he does better. Uh, you know, I hope he, things work out for him. But this entire time, Mid has been free, and yet Luna decides to stay. She completely tunnel visions on this bottom lane, and in fact, she only gets about, I think, like 10 CS in about two minutes. It's absurdly bad. It really, really is bad, considering it could be 10 times better. In fact, I might have been over exaggerating with the 10 and two minutes. It might have been like seven or eight. And so, yeah, that's the final point of this point. That's why she only has 65 CS in 13 minutes. The next mistake, the third mistake, is that carrier players often farm too far or they farm too short. What I mean by that is exactly what we'll see in this example here. So once again, we're back to the Juggernaut and we see a massive fight going on the top lane. That Luna ulti was absolute garbage. But nonetheless, going back to the Juggernaut, what we're gonna see is that he's just staring at this top fight. Now that's okay, you know, scouting things out. I do think he's paying way too much attention and should be focused on his own game. But what information do we have as the Juggernaut? We have the fact that the entire enemy team is top, right? And because of that, should he go to the next creep wave? Yes. Also, when you were split pushing, you need to look at the clock. So his main goal right now is to get as much farm as possible, right guys? He's a jug, he's not having a good game, and, and therefore he has to get as much farm as possible. So when we look at the clock and we see it's 1750, that means there's a creep wave about right here, right? A little bit ahead of the juggernaut. However, because he doesn't understand, you know, the clock and the timer and he doesn't look at it, my man, even though the entire enemy team is top, runs into the jungle. Do you see how inefficient this is? Where are you going? And everyone does this. The wave could be here. And still, people will just run away. Please, pay attention to the clock. Pay attention to the enemy team. If you see that your threats are on the map and are showing, push the next creep wave. If they are not, back up. Now let's get into the next example where people play too aggressive. In this next clip here, we're about 23 minutes in, and I want you to pay attention to the map. Currently, his team is in the general vicinity, but they're mostly mid. So, if I was him, I wouldn't necessarily hit the tower yet, 
only because the enemy team has not showed bottom, they're hovering around mid and top, therefore it's relatively dangerous. However, my man, instead of considering to flash farm as it's 2304, meaning this camp is almost 100% alive, right, it is, instead of going to flash farm, he's going to punch a tower that is nearly full HP. On top of that, this tower basically does nothing. It doesn't change the game, it doesn't open up the map, it doesn't let you kill any, it doesn't really do anything at all. It just gives a little bit of gold, which, you know, you wouldn't want to sacrifice your life for. So nonetheless, his team is not in the vicinity. On top of that, this is an inconsequential tower. On top of that, the enemy team might be here. So, you can't hit the tower. But players, they, they just say, oh, you know, I'm the carry, I'm the building hitter. I picked Juggernaut because my team needed a building hitter. Therefore, when I'm split pushing, I I'm going to call it split farming now, just so people really understand what I mean. When I'm split farming, when, when I'm trying to get farm on the map by splitting up the map, I'm not going to necessarily hit the tower because here he could have just been flash farming the camp. Instead, he's hitting a tier one when his Grimstroke and Axe are, are, are going on a date to the bottom lane. And therefore, you know, there's going to be a really weird fight starting like i don't know what he's thinking half of his teammates are not even here and yet my man is spinning in how do you make that play not only are you under a tower half your team's not here how is this possible and then what is this how much damage do you think it and don't tell me guys like oh my god i can't believe this is legend i never make these mistakes yes you do please fix them the next mistake we have to talk about is that most carry players around the early to mid game Frontline when they can't frontline. Usually when you're playing carry, your hero develops over time. So in the early to mid game, you kind of want to look to stay around the edges of the fight and look for good targets that you can burst so that you don't die to random AOE magical spells such as Laguna Blade, such as Dragon Slave, and Grimstroke Q. Now, what I want to show in this example here is that everything in this player's head is sort of backwards. It's sort of backwards because... My man is buying an axe, which is not a frontline item, right? It's like Satanic is, Bikibi is, Menta is. These are frontline items, but my guy has a Mask of Madness, Dragonlance Yasha, which are items that do not allow him to frontline, and yet, when this fight breaks out, he's going in first. Who on his team should likely be the one trying to soak the damage? Now, it's not too obvious, they kind of have a weird team comp, but I would be willing to argue it, it should be the Mechanism Pipe Necrophos. And so, if this Luna understand how the fight should generally break down, often she wants to see the Necro go in first, so that she can come around the side and use this Dragon Lance that actually allows her to stay further away from the fight. That's the purpose of this item, to stay further away from the heroes, right? Then she can stay further away if the Necrophos goes in first, but instead, she goes in first, which means she can't auto-attack anyone, she gets clipped by an Omni Slash, now, because she went in first, she's the priority of all the spells, and obviously she is not able to live. This is not surprising, her build does not let her live, on top of that, it's early game Luna, generally you can't. So guys, please keep this in mind, don't ping your teammates like whatever this guy's face is here. You're the issue, you can't frontline, you can't walk in the front. You need to find angles until you hit your item timings. And finally, we have an awesome clip here for the last mistake, which is TPing to bad fights. Players constantly TP to bad fights, so I'm going to show you some good rules of thumb and ways of thinking about, you know, how should you know and how can you learn to TP to only good fights? Because that's very important as a carry, because if you commit your TP to one side of the map, you're naturally going to slow down your farm, as if you get ganked or ran at, or, you know, there's a creep wave you want to TP to, all of a sudden, you can't. So, let's look at this upcoming clip from the Luna's perspective. What we see right now going on on the minimap is that her team is fighting. So if she TP'd right now, I would be like, okay, that's kind of reasonable. The fight just broke out. She'll definitely be in time to contribute. That's awesome. However, she's not quick enough. She's not decisive enough to TP instantly, which I think would have been okay in this case. Instead, she's going to push out this creep wave. Then, without looking, she never looks top. Without even clicking her camera there once. She just TPs. Now, when she looks, she's like, oh, they're already all dead. They're all dead! So why is this a problem? Because she could have actually contributed and gotten kills if she TP'd right away. That's what option number one. Option number two is not TP at all in this case because they already won the fight, which she would have known or have an inkling of if she ever looked. So guys, the main thing as a carry player is if you want to know if you should TP to a fight, you have to be more conscious of the minimap so you can see things coming earlier. You have to have that ability. 
And on top of that, you actually have to click on the other side of the map just to have a slight clue of what's going on, or at least wait for the enemy team to dive a tower. That's also a great rule of thumb. I say consistently within my videos, and I, of course, stand by that. But now the, the Luna is running a, a love train. What is that song? Come on, every world. I'm not even going to try to sing it because I'm going to get, like, banned or something. But please, guys, look at where you're TPing. TP early or don't TP at all, right? Uh, understand what's happening in the fight. Make sure it's a dive. It's something you know you're going to be able to participate in, not some tier one push that now you get caught in where you throw out this garbage eclipse that only works on the Dazzle because my man is just frontlining with, with a level seven Dazzle with mana boots. And that's where we're going to end the video. <laughs> nah, but thank you guys for watching. I hopefully uh, you enjoyed and learned some things about the carry roll. I put a lot of effort into this video, just trying to give, you know, specific clips for each individual tip. So if you appreciate that, if you could click the like button and consider signing up to GameLeap.com, I would appreciate it a lot. I'm creating daily content over there as well that is exclusive to that website. It's not being posted here on YouTube. And yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. And peace. Good luck with your carry games. Before you leave, just want to say a quick message. If you're trying to get better at Dodo or you just enjoyed that video, uh, I know this is pretty general and you're going to hear this quite a bit from me. But I recommend you sign up to GameLeap.com. Why? Because I put a lot of effort into the content over there and generally the effort I do there is different from the content you're gonna see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster. Because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream. That's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end, because a lot of people just watch five minutes, they skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below, get your discount right now by clicking the link, sign up, use the discount code that you're going to see there. And I hope to see you there right now. So click it. And uh, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.